So imagine being able to wake up in the morning, look into your shoe closet, and decide how tall you're going to be and what superpower you're going to have. Once upon a time, Hugh Herr was a nationally ranked climber. Then he lost both his legs in a nearly fatal climbing accident. Has that kept him from climbing? climbing? No. He simply designed limbs that are better at climbing than most of ours. Has that kept him from running? No. Best you not race him. Has this made him one of the most creative biomechatronic scientists on the planet? Yes. Hugh directs the biomechatronics group at the MIT Media Lab. Prosthetics that he has designed are already helping amputees all over the world. Good morning, everyone. Delighted to be here. Uh, as stated, my name is Hugh Harv. These are my legs um, that you uh, just saw. Let me go back. Um, they're filled with uh, microprocessors and sensors and muscle tendon-like actuators. Uh, they allow me to walk onto the stage in a normal fashion. Um, but uh, they're intrinsically controlled. Uh, their brains and sensing and all is, is housed within uh, the prosthetic cover. What we want to do is link um, the, the nervous system to the mechatronics and also the mechatronics to the nervous system. For, so for someone like myself with limb amputation, that will now allow me to think and to affect the synthetic motors. It will also allow me uh, to actually have uh, feelings about the limbs, a feeling of sensation or proprioceptive feedback. Um, so we want this bi-directionality between the brain and the mechatronics. Um, our approach is uh, what we call neural and body design. We want to, of course, design the synthetics, but also to design the human body itself uh, to enhance the bidirectional communication between uh, the nervous system and the mechatronics. So I'm going to underscore we want to hack the human directly uh, to enhance this level of communication. Um, there's several areas within uh, my group that are pursuing this area of uh, design. Uh, one is we've uh, re-envisioned how limbs should be amputated. Uh, turns out the amputation strategy hasn't changed uh, fundamentally since the US Civil War. Um, so even though we've had a precipitous improvement in external mechatronics, there's been little innovation in the standard clinical care on how limbs are amputated from a surgical rege regenerative perspective. <laughs> So uh, here at MIT, we invented the agonist antagonist neural neural interface, a mouthful. We call it AMI for short. So what is, what is an AMI? So surgically, you uh, take two muscle bodies and you, you link them in series, uh, creating an agonist antagonist pair such that when the agonist is electrically activated, either by the brain or through a synthetic um, uh, electrical activation, uh, the agonist contracts and stretches the antagonist. Because muscles are organs, they're filled with biological sensors, spindles and Golgi tendon organs, and all that information on muscle length, speed, and force gets sent to the brain. That's why we can move a joint in our body like I'm moving in my elbow, and I know its, its position and speed. And if you hand me a barbell, I know its load uh, even when I close my eyes. So the idea is we create small little agonist and antagonist muscle pairs within the residuum uh, at the time of amputation. Uh, for every Amy or every muscle pair, we can then control a degree of freedom in the external prosthesis. So if there's three degrees of freedom, for, such as in this graphic, it would be a powered knee, powered ankle, powered subtalar joint, we would create three muscle pairs and then put sensors on those muscle pairs to directly control each degree of freedom on the peripheral. The idea, of course, is when the person thinks and moves their phantom limb, the little muscles are moving back and forth, sending proprioceptive information to the brain as the bionic mechanisms are moving in the same way. So therefore, the person will actually feel the movement as a proprioceptive awareness. This is my friend, Jim. Um, like myself, he's a rock climber. Uh, he fell uh, 50 feet. His rope failed to catch him in the Cayman Islands. He broke many bones, punctured both lungs. Uh, and uh, one leg in particular was, was damaged. Uh, after 
uh, rehabilitation and healing uh, when he, every step that he took, he experienced excruciating pain. And he came to me crying and he said, Hugh, I can't live like this. I can't live with all this pain. Should I amputate my leg? Uh, turns out we had just uh, invented this new amputation paradigm and Jim vo volunteered to be the first human. The surgery on, to amputate Jim's leg was conducted at Brigham Women's Hospital under the direction of Matt Carty, one of my key collaborators. Matt is a plastic surgeon. Uh, so here's what was done in Jim's amputation. Uh, so instead of amputating the limb and throwing away all the distal tissues, uh, we actually use the distal tissues. Um, so we take what are called synovial canals and we reposition them on the tibia to create uh, sliding surfaces, kind of linear biological bearings to create these sliding muscle pairs. One muscle pair is for the ankle and it's the second for the subtalar joint. So we hypothesize when we attach a prosthesis, the person would, would be able to move the phantom limb and full, feel the full dynamic range of the phantom limb um, and be able to know the position of the limb even when, when blindfolded. Um, we then hooked the biomechatronics uh, to Jim's leg, and uh, what, we, what we observed was just miraculous. And every once in a while in a scientist's life, there's an incredible day. This is one, one such day in my life. So Jim stood up, and as he went up and down steps and slopes, all the natural biomechanical movements came through the mechatronics. And we're staring there, I'm like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And it turns out the movements were, uh, were involuntary. Jim wasn't trying to move the mechatronics at all. Just like when you walk up and down steps, you're not trying to move your limbs. Your limbs are just moving as a reflexive involuntary action. So all these movements that you see here, let me go back, um, are Jim is not actually trying to do. Yeah, there we go. So all those subtle movements and foot placements, um, um, he's just, he just sees the steps and is walking up or down. So here you see the bionic toe reaching for the next stair tread for shock attenuation. That's what you typically see in a normal biological limb. Um, Jim would also say incredible things. Uh, when we turn the feedback on, uh, when we link the mechatronics to his nervous system, he said the robot became part of me having trouble with this clicker. Really, literally within minutes of having it all connected, it starts becoming part of me. And he started doing uh, things that we've never seen before. So one day he actually accidentally stood on a, a roll of electrical tape. You know how it's sticky on the side? And it got stuck to his bionic sneaker. So what do you do when something's stuck to your shoe? You don't reach down, it's too awkward. You shake it the hell off. That's exactly what Jim did. This is after three hours of being neurally linked to the mechatronics. And then I, what I find to be even more extraordinary and an indication of, of embodiment is after the session, Jim sat down and we we're just chit-chatting. And he starts gesturing with his limb. You don't see this with a normal prosthesis. The prosthesis just hangs there in a, in a dead fashion. Um, what are we going to do next? So we now have IDE approval, FDA approval, to do two amputations, um, which will be conducted this summer on the transfemoral level above knee. Um, so we're, with transected nerves, we're going to put the muscle bodies close to those transected nerves. The nerves will, we believe, regenerate and attach to the muscle end organs. We'll then put unipolar electrodes um, inside the body on the muscle, uh, muscle constructs. Then the wires to those electrodes will, will be clumped together and will pass through a bone in the femur created by the surgeons. We'll then put an osseo implant into the femur. Um, and the implant has a high little shaft, so we'll run all the wiring through the shaft to the external powered limb. Uh, we've now built a external prosthesis with a powered knee, ankle, subtalar joint, and soon uh, MTP joint. And this will be a first demonstration of a bi-directional communication where the afferent feedback is the muscle tendon proprioception. So that's coming very, very soon. Um, so uh, that's prosthetics. Um, we're also doing uh, exoskeletons. Hopefully my video will work. 
So what about uh, robots running in parallel to the body? Uh, can we build them? Can we actually augment human locomotory function? And can we ultimately uh, cook the nervous system to such parallel ro robots? Um, we're building robots that run up the entire leg. We're also redesigning what shoes are. These are bionic boots, um, which essentially offer a, a virtual uh, calf muscle that propels the body upward and forward with each step, augmenting jumping and running and walking. Um, the augmentation is so profound that if you use these for just 20 minutes and take them off, your own biological legs feel heavy and awkward. Great goal. Uh, <laughs> um, so how do we want to link to the, the brain to these wear wearables? We need something that's very, very minimally invasive. So we're taking small spherical magnets coated on titanium, uh, injecting them into muscle with at least two magnetic beads. Uh, you, we can track with an external array of magnetometers um, the XYZ location of each magnet uh, embedded in the body. There's no wires going to the magnet, so you just pop them in. Any nurse in a closet can put them in. Um, we then have an exquisite measure of the length, speed, and force of a muscle, which can be communicated to any wearable device. So imagine a future where we have bionic high heels used by men and women that power walking and running in high heel fashion and that are linked to magnetic beads and muscles driven r directly from the brain. Uh, going back to Jim, uh, he fell climbing. Uh, his dream was to return to climbing as a cyborg. So we built him a cyborg rock climbing leg. Uh, he returned to the Cayman Islands, the site where he fell climbing. And we, of course, followed him with a massive film crew. And I'll show you uh, the product now. Thank you.